it's a question of the intellectual history of capitalism, which is almost entirely missing from this narrative. Uh, you know, as a uh, historian of economic thought, this is something I've studied for decades and is, is very near and dear to me. But you can go all the way back to Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, which was published in 1776. It's generally considered like the first full true treatise of economics uh, that argues uh, from kind of this free market uh, capitalist perspective. Of course, they didn't use the name capitalism back then. Uh, that's a little bit of a later in invention. But uh, the way that Smith is, is contextualized in that part of the history, he's kind of the founding figure of capitalism and that whole intellectual lineage of, of free market thought up into the present day, which is interesting because Adam Smith is also an abolitionist. And in The Wealth of Nations, he attacks slavery. In several of his other works and lectures, he attacks slavery. This is a major theme of his entire academic career is denouncing this horrendous institution that he sees taking place uh, across the seas in the colonies. But he sees it as both economically destructive and, uh, and morally destructive. So um, he is, is certainly not someone that would be associating his economic system with the slave class. So there, there, there's a, an immediate complication. That should be the red flag of, uh, of, uh, of something like the 1619 Project, is claiming that capitalism and slavery are friends, and yet the, uh, the preeminent kind of founding theorist of free market capitalist thought is an abolitionist. Something's not adding up right there. Adam Smith has many intellectual and political errors in the early 19th century that really take up the mantle of what we'd call free market capitalist thought. Uh, foremost among them in, in Great Britain is Richard Cobden, who um, it leads the, the, the charge in Parliament to abolish protective tariffs and is, is just a, a major figure in elevating what we call the, like, the laissez-faire school of thought into prominence on economic matters. But it turns out Cobden himself is also an abolitionist and the campaigns against the Southern Confederacy during the American Civil War. He's over in Britain trying to discourage uh, people in Britain from supporting the Confederacy and saying, you know, the Union cause is the one that we should back. So uh, it, it just doesn't add up when you start looking at all these figures in what we'd call the capitalist tradition. It gets even more complicated <laughs> because on the pro-slavery side. You have uh, uh, figures that are, are defending slavery from the Southern perspective. Uh, foremost among them is a guy by the name of George Fitzhugh. Uh, he's a very popular pamphleteer in the 1850s. Is seen as kind of like the, uh, the, the foil, the William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass, the abolitionists in the North. This is their pro-slavery adversary in the South. So, so George Fitzhugh, this, this radical pro-slavery theorist, denounces capitalism. He uh, writes a pamphlet in, uh, in the early 1850s where he says that we should take the, uh, uh, the theories of Adam Smith, of his successors, and cast them into the fire. And his reason was he thought that free market capitalism, by promoting free labor, would undermine the slave system. He said that uh, uh, free market ideology, laissez-faire theory, is at war with slavery. So not only do you have abolitionists aligning on the free market side, you have slave owners and slave theorists aligning on the anti-capitalist side in the 19th century. This is the complete opposite of the story that these uh, these writers in the 1619 Project are claiming. 